Welcome to Marvel Rivals. Today we have over 20 tips and tricks, ranging from character changes, a bunch of different settings that you can change, and a whole lot of quality of life changes. So let's get started. Our first tip is for Rocket Raccoon. You may be familiar with his Rocket Dash, but what you may not know is you can combine it with the wall climb. So as you begin wall climbing, just hit the dash. You will jet up into the air and then slowly glide down. This can help you get out of a few sticky situations, and the enemy definitely will not be expecting it. Our next tip is for the cutie patootie Jeff. He has a combo that makes him absolutely invincible. Once you're in the dive state, you can quickly dish out bubbles and seamlessly escape the enemy. You're only out of the ground for a split second, and even dudes like Iron Fist won't be able to touch you. Also, Jeff has infinite range, so whether you're in the front or the back, that healing stream will reach. Our next tip is for Groot. If you didn't know already, Groot can crank 90s, so you can create yourself a little platform wherever and whenever to drop down on the enemy and beat people like Iron Fist to the ground. You can use this to make staircases to get to a higher level, or you could build yourself a cozy cabin and escape the chaos. Next up is all about the Punisher. This man comes packed with more features than you're led to believe, and the first one is that you never have to reload. Once you've shot all of your shots, you can switch over to the shotgun and start pounding away again. When you're done with the shotgun, just switch back and your gun will be reloaded. This is the infinite ammo hack. Damn. And boy is it powerful. Especially when you don't have time to reload in the middle of combat. Next up is that you can use your zipline as sort of a slingshot. So if you line it up at the side of the building and then jump off right before, you will be slingshotted. Although that was a bad example. Maybe this one will be a little bit better. There we go. Also when using the Punisher's ultimate, you can no longer be staggered. So Luna Snow can't ice you up and Penny Parker can't web you up. They pretty much have to kill you or run. Now this next setting is gonna help you know if you're actually hitting your heels. This setting is called Healing Reticle Feedback. And once it's enabled, you'll see that green animation play around your crosshair. This is that feedback to let you know your heels are hitting on point. So now you'll never be wondering. It's that good peace of mind to have. Another setting you need to make sure you enable is in the audio tab. We have 3D enhancement, which will turn on that spatial audio. So if Iron Fist is trying to hit it from the back, you're gonna hear those footsteps. Well, if you're wearing headphones, that is. This helps you to know your surroundings. And then if we scroll over to the next tab, Combat Mix, we wanna make sure we have announced when a teammate is KO'd, as well as announce enemy KO. You can adjust the volume for each of these, but in a nutshell, you'll hear two distinct sounds, one for an enemy KO, and one if your teammates get eliminated which is definitely a nice quality of life add-on. Next, you need to keep aware of your surroundings, specifically the environment where you can destroy it. You can find out what objects are breakable using your chrono hotkey. Anything in yellow is destructible, and sometimes the tide of the game can change depending on the objects you destroy. You can view and change your hotkey for the chrono vision under controller and UI. So definitely get familiar with the maps and learn what destroying different objects can do for you and your team. There's also a UI setting that is a must change. So if you go back to controller and then over to communication, your default will be on four sections. You need to change this to eight. This will give you more options to use. So you can set things such as thanks, greetings, acknowledge, as well as your typical attack and I need healing. This definitely comes in handy because by default, things like thanks, knowledge, and greetings are not binded already. Another way to really fine tune your settings is found in the accessibility tab. Here you have the custom colors menu where you can change a bunch of the UI elements. So you have colors ranging from orange all the way to purple or blue. So that's how we've customized our own health bar and the health bars of our allies with green. It's a little bit easier to see, so it could give you that advantage in combat. Another setting you might want to adjust is back under controller, and this is turning off vibration and trigger effect function. Although fun to use, it can get pretty distracting after a couple of games. Plus the trigger effect option will fatigue your fingers if you're doing a long session. You can also fully customize your crosshair in game. So under controller and combat, if you click on this plus icon under advance, you have the option to choose between many different crosshairs as well as fully customize how they look including the color or even a custom color. 
You can also save multiple presets and change between them based on the character you want. And while we're still in the settings, the character you like to use may have secret settings. So for example, Spider-Man, you should probably turn automatic swinging off so you have free reign to use your web as you see fit. You're able to choose exactly where you want to swing from, or if you're on the ground, you can use it as a zip line. Another example would be for Captain America. By default, if you press his sprint button, it doesn't deactivate until you press it again. Or for his shield, once you press it, it automatically stays on until you press it again. You can change these settings if you like. So instead of just tapping the button, you can change it to where you have to hold those buttons in order to have them activate. So once you release that button, your skills will deactivate. So make sure to see if your character has any secret features. Also take advantage of the practice range. This thing comes jam-packed with features. It comes with practice settings that you can adjust, so you can turn ability cooldown off, allowing you to freely use abilities at your will and get that practice in. You have static targets to practice your aim, or even moving targets as well. This is a great place to also practice your combos. With the ability ability to choose the hero you want to beat down, so you can see what combo is most effective for you. You can even simulate team up abilities, which will give you a full chart of the combos, and once you find the combo for your character, you can spawn in that specific hero. Definitely great for getting the hang of different heroes combos. You also have this handy little area, where you can change a bunch of different parameters, allowing you to get some pretty unique trading opportunities. I'm sorry Jeff, I'm just glad this is a simulation, I hate doing this to you man. This is a great area to practice all of your heroes, which is our next tip. With the amount of people who love playing DPS, you need to be able to fill. So having a character you can tank as well as heal well with will definitely come in handy. Moving on, remember that you can view your scorecard. You can see the current stats as well as see as who's dead on your team at the moment. Also, don't forget that you have the melee ability. If your enemy is one hit away, it's faster to give them a quick jab than it is to do a full on reload. Also keep in mind that hitting down on the d-pad is the ping option. So you can ping various locations or you can even ping the enemy trying to flank you. This comes in clutch to redirect the team and take out the threat. Also keep in mind you have access to the Marvel Rivals website where you can check out different heroes information with more detail than the game provides you. So you can see things such as total health, movement speed, so it's a good resource to have to fully maximize your character. Now our last tip may be the most important one and this tip is to simply never killed Jeff. He just doesn't deserve it. So just leave this cutie patootie alone. Damn Wolverine. All jokes aside though, I hope you found this guide useful and hopefully you found something to enhance your gameplay. If you want even more guides for Marvel Rivals, don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time though, we'll see ya.